It's 2 p.m. You know what that means. Matthew 28. Woo! Last chapter. I hope you're excited. I'm excited. Thor, I don't know if he's excited or not. But we're going to wait for some folks. Those notifications sometimes take some time. Waking up the old guy sometimes takes some time. Good to see all of you. And I pray that your day is going swimmingly. We have a lot to do today. The sooner that we can get rolling, the better chance we have of finishing the chapter. Could you possibly see that? Hi, Linda Kimmel. Hi, Carol, Jean, Cindy. Happy Saturday to you, Cindy. I hope you're taking a day off. That's our registrar. Um, working hard. Working, working hard. Hi, Cheryl. Not to be confused with Carol. <laughs> Oh, good day. Gone live. Hi, Brian. Newman. Hi, Maggie. Hi, Tyler. Good to see you. Steve, the Lord be with you. One more. We'll give it another minute, and then we're going to be on our way. All right. Press this button here. Hit this. Hit that. Terry Lynn is here. Share that. Oh, looking good. One more click of my... Uh, Magic track pad. Hi, Colonel. Good to see you. I hope your day. Remember, this is not a monologue, even though Thor and I appear to be on our own. Oops, he missed. This is a discussion, and we're going to have this discussion um, uh, between us with a 30-second delay on my end. So I will get to, um, to when we, uh, I will get to your questions as they arrive. Um, but uh, yeah, there you go, buddy. Matthew 28. Hey, buddy. Oops, you missed. All right. After the Sabbath, which would be Sunday. Um, ooh. As it was, um, as it was dawning. What a great word. Epiphosco. Um, you know, I want to know the origin of this word. Um, my bet is that fo it, phos is in it, which means as it's becoming light, as it's lightning, not light lighting, you know, but <laughs> ah! I don't know if you can see this, but uh, right before the video, I redid his pillows, his, uh, his stuff. And um, I, I put him on the top of the cover and he is not happy about that at all we got up much earlier than we were expecting to get up and he wants nothing to do with this okay so he's gonna get a little siesta going on as it was dawning on the first of the sabbath the first day of the week um miriam magdalene mary magdalene came and the other mary uh to to see the tomb and behold, there was a uh, uh, there happened a a big earthquake, and an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, out of heaven, and coming rolled back the stone and sat upon it. 
which is just one of my favorite. Hi, Beth. It's just one of my favorite pictures in scripture, which is that of an angel sitting on a, on a giant stone, sort of kicking his feet. Like he has no care of the world, like something out of stand by me, um, on a bridge back when they let you hang your feet over the bridge. Um, but you know, he's just free and he's just there. And he rolls away the stone and he sits on it. And his appearance was like lightning. As trepe, that's, um, you know, uh, that's close to um, uh, that's the same word, I think, for cosmic phenomenon. There it is. Um, I was going to say that word is used. um, There was a movie um, that was just released uh, named similar as like a steer on or something like that. It was an awful movie. Um, You know, Lestico. You know, another way of looking at this is like he's sitting there on the edge like Deadpool was at the beginning of Deadpool. Another awful movie that I'm not suggesting, but carefree, sitting over a bridge with your feet hanging down. Um, His appearance was like that of a cosmic, um, uh, like like, like a cosmic occurrence or lightning. And his clothes were... Lucan white as um, as snow. Remember the first snow I ever um, really experienced when I was at the seminary. I was a southern boy and Hebrew was early in the morning and uh, there was flurries and the um, Bartelt was my Hebrew professor. I think he was. Yeah. Bartelt was my Hebrew professor and they used to mock me because uh, here's a southern boy coming in and when it would like flurry, I'd be like, is that snow? And they were like, no, not snow. I was like, well, is, is, is that snow? Nope. Those are flurries. And then the whole of the outside became white. And I looked at them and they were like, that's snow. I was like, really? Yeah. As a young pup seeing snow for the first time. Um, we saw snow every now and again in Baton Rouge. I think uh, it snowed my senior year in high school and I, pelted my older brother with a um, with a snowball and then had to run from him. It was the best throw of my baseball career. Um, he was across the parking lot and I hit him right in the ear and then he proceeded to put me and my friends in a trash can with his friends. He was a senior. I was a freshman. I need counseling, I think. Um, so um, I love snow. And so you want to picture this angel as white as light, lightning, or the sun. The sun appears yellow because of our atmosphere, but in actuality, the sun is white. Um, his clothing, white as snow. And out of fear, apo from fear, uh, the te ruten, ru- ruentes, the, those guarding him or those who were keeping watch over him, um, uh, on behalf of fear were um, uh, trembled. They were stirred up and they became as dead men. And so the only people on, on Easter, hi, Jennifer, the Lord be with you. The only people on Easter. um, I love, I love the Midwest, Cheryl. Um, I loved serving there. Um, I always find my way back to the South, but I, I do love the Midwest. Hey, buddy, you want this? No. How about another one? You want that one? No. How about this one? No. Nothing? This one, you want to wake up? Boom, on up the head. Four off the head in a row, if you're counting. The is a boy. And those were halves. Those were not full treats. So if you're thinking I'm just fattening them up. Good boy. All right. So the only folks that are dead on Easter morning are the guards. 
Hi, Arlene. The guards, they become as dead men. Hi, Bobby Joe. Dead men. Now, the angel addresses the woman, five. Ho angelos epi teis gunaixin. Um, answering the angel said to the women. Now, what are the women there for? Okay, what are they there for? Well, it's sort of easy. Um, the women are there to prepare his dead body. They're there because they believe that, that the events of Good Friday are not over yet because they need to take care of, um, they need to take care of their Lord. They need to do what's proper for him. So they show up on Easter morning. Uh, yeah, look, the cans are gone in Bossier City. All that's left are these piddly, bottle, piddly bottles that, you know, they're okay and all. Oops. But there's always that. With such a precious commodity and the shortage of Diet Mountain Dew, I shouldn't be spilling it. All right. Sorry about that. But they, but this this actually adds to the historicity of the thing. They don't go to the um, uh, they don't go to the um, uh, they don't go to the the tomb singing a hymn. He's risen, he's risen, Christ Jesus the Lord. N now, now, they go to prepare the dead body. And they're women. They don't count as witnesses in the ancient world. Only men do. Two men count as witnesses. Hey, buddy. Really? You could have caught that. Back to the dead. Don't fear. Y'all don't fear. For you seek Jesus. Oh, I love this. The crucified. You seek Jesus the crucified. He is not here. See where they laid him. Um, he, he, I'm sorry. He, he is not here. He has risen, Kathos, just as he said. Um, look and see. Come look and come see the topos where they laid him. All right, a couple of things that I absolutely love about this, and you should love about this too. Um, you see, gee, don't fear. Don't fear. First words of an angel. Don't fear. Don't fear, you seek Jesus, the crucified. See, the good news of Easter isn't that just somebody rose from the dead. Because remember, people rose from the dead on Good Friday. They came out of their tombs and after the resurrection appeared to many. I don't know what they did for the three days, but that's not my business. I'll leave that to God. Um, but uh, what, what, I, what I want you to see, though, is that how Jesus is referred to by the angel. Don't fear, you seek Jesus, the crucified. And now that, 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 that is the one having been crucified. So the good news is not that just anybody rose from the dead on Easter morning. The good news is that Jesus, the crucified, rose from the dead on Easter morning. That is hugely important. It is not just good news that the angel announces, Alleluia! Jesus Christ is risen from the dead! Hmm. Is there something else I can... Ooh. 
activated Siri, and Siri was trying to figure out the last two minutes of what I've said. So it's, it's not just that, Alleluia, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. And they were like, he is risen indeed. Alleluia. It's Jesus the crucified has risen from the dead. The one who was crucified now lives. The one crucified for your sins and raised for your forgiveness. He's alive. And he will forever be the crucified. Forever be the crucified. Forever. There's never going to be a time in which he's like, nah, I didn't die for you. There's never going to be a person that he's like, eh, I died for everybody but you. Instead, he looks at the worst of the worst, Lestico, and says, I died for you, I rose for you, I live for you. You seek Jesus, the crucified. He's not here. See where they laid him. He's gone. John's gospel has everything folded up neatly, as is the case when you're not in a hurry. Because he wasn't in a hurry. Yeah, Pastor Yeager. Welcome to the dance, buddy. One of my former students who's now uh, a pastor in Michigan, Pastor Yeager, he's like, right, right, the crucified one. They preach the cross on Easter Sunday. Go figure. Right, so there's no bait and switch on Easter. No, we're going to have a cannon and clowns and a carnival and Easter eggs. And maybe after everyone's comfortable, we'll get around to Jesus. No, their words, don't fear. You seek Jesus, the one crucified. He's not here. See the place where he lay, they laid him. There's more. Verse 7. Quickly, also, um, pore the sai. That verb is going to use, be used a couple of times. Um, that is an aorist passive. So, um, you know, simple passive. You know, get gone, go. Um, it's a participle. Um, so, um, when you go, tell the disciples... Sometimes the uh, participle in, is, is, is sort of translated into English as an imperative, but um, let's not, because later on that creates a problem with this same verb. So quickly, uh, you know, as you're going or, 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 or um, when, when you go, um, tell the disciples, his disciples, that he has risen from the dead. And behold, he goes ahead of y'all into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I've told y'all. Brian, <laughs> I think we had participles for supper last night. I'm sorry for not showing you the text. There it is again. Go quickly. As you're going, uh, quickly tell the disciples his disciples, that he has risen from the dead. And behold, he goes before you to Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I've told you. And so they uh, went out quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy. And running, they proclaimed to the disciples, his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them saying, Carita, Greetings. 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 And they and and, and they, they 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 going to him, another participle, they grasp hold of his feet and pros kunesan, they worshipped him. Um, no, Brian, I, I appreciate that. I, I appreciate the joke. I mean, anything's better than Lestico. Why the fear, Terry Lynn? Well, uh, well, Terry Lynn, great question. Why the fear? Because dead people are supposed to stay dead. Dead people are supposed to stay dead. And, and they're not dead. 
He's not dead. He's alive. And they're no longer going to live in a universe where dead people stay dead. They're going to leave, live in a universe where, where God raises the dead. And so, and how true is this? How real is this? If this were a created story, if this was made up, then they would skip away going, we got it, I believe. But instead, they skip away afraid. Mark's gospel have them stumbling away and telling nothing to no one because trembling and afraid fear sees them. That's a real response to Jesus raising from the dead. Look, we have the experience of 2,000 years. We have the experience of hearing the scriptures all our life, that every Easter begins the same. Jesus Christ has risen from the dead. He is risen indeed, alleluia, that the one on Good Friday rose again from the dead. But if you're at ground zero in A.D. 30 to 33, whenever it was, and you hear the angel say to you, don't fear, you seek Jesus the crucified, he's not here, see the place where they laid him, go and tell the disciples that he's going to meet you in Galilee, see, I, see I've told you, there you'll see him. Yeah, and Abigail's right on. Abigail's in the zone. Um, he, it's not that he was mostly dead and therefore somewhat alive and Miracle Max didn't bring him back from the dead with a big giant shock, chocolate-coated pill like Princess Bride. No, he was completely dead, not at all alive, and now he's risen from the dead. And he makes an appearance to them, greetings. And they worship him, but they're afraid because that's the reaction that would happen in real life. Anyone who says, you know, if I were there on Easter morning, I would have gone there singing to him. You're full of it. You're dreaming. You're on crack cocaine. You're in cuckoo land, population you. Because the rest of us, meh, the rest of us would go to the tomb and be frightened by the angel, by the stone, by the earthquake. We'd be the dead guards because dead people are supposed to stay dead. But this Jesus isn't dead. He's alive. And he's alive forevermore. Come quickly, Lord Jesus. What a text. What a text. I love this text. I love the realness of it. How do you know this actually happened? Because it's true. This is the way people would react to a dead man coming back from the dead. And Jesus said to them, don't fear. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. So who is the first witnesses to the resurrection? Women who aren't even supposed to be witnesses. Women who just a hundred years later, earlier, um, maybe not even that, maybe 80, philosophers are wondering whether they have souls. Well, of course they have soul. Just kidding. Um, here, they're the first witnesses to the resurrection. They're headed back. I'm going to tell one of my elders that I'm having a Bible study. Isn't that funny? Two p.m. Bible study. Don't miss this. Don't miss how wonderfully gifted this is. This actually happened. And so he has to tell them, go tell the disciples, go tell my brothers to go to Galilee. In Mark's gospel, um, the angel says, go tell the disciples and Peter. Why difference with Peter? Because Peter denied him. But Brian's right. This is great. Go tell my disciples. I said, hey. Yeah, right, Pastor Yeager. It wasn't you this time.
Wow. James, uh, Pastor Lestico, the Gnostic Gospel of Thomas claims Jesus said he's going to turn Mary Magdalene into a man so she can be in heaven. This is the thing to remember about most of the Gnostic Gospels. They're whack. And generally dated 200 or 300 years after the Gospel occurred. Back to the text. Verse 11. Pariu ominon. As they were going, behold, uh, some of the custodians, the, the guards, went into the city and um, announced to the chief priests all that had happened. Yeah, Brian, that's what it says. The disciples and Peter. Because Peter needs to know. You can look at this two ways. You can either look at this as Peter's out. He has set himself outside the faith. So tell the disciples and Peter. Or you can look at it as like Peter really needs to hear this. I like the second one. Peter really needs you to, to um, give him the gospel that I'm, that I'm raised from the dead. He needs to hear that. Oh, we're running out of time and I want to do Matthew 28. Um, so when they had um, gathered together the elders, uh, Meta with the elders um, and, and, and counseled, They gave them sufficient silver, considerable silver, the soldiers' considerable silver, saying, um, tell, uh, say that the disciples coming by night, his disciples, kleptoed the body, his body, while we were asleep. Uh, now, the problem with this is um, guards who don't do their jobs generally are killed. Bobby Joe, those Gnostic Gospels are um, the Gospels which were floating around in the second and third centuries, um, long after the four Gospels had taken place, which tried to incorporate philosophy the, the 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 their day's philosophy into the gospel account gnostic means knowledge and the idea in the ancient world was that um how to break this down that there was a philosophical word Something which um, which was the end all be all, and 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 there was a dualistic aspect to it. So there was flesh and spirit, and 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 carnal and 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 spiritual, sort of like today, with sort of a new agey sort of thing or um, uh, uh, Scientology. And the idea was to move away from the fleshy sort of thing to the spiritual stuff. Um, and, and that is inco incompatible with the Christian faith, which is so rooted in the incarnation of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so rather than adapt the Gospels to this message, some folks just introduced new Gospels, supposedly written by like of Thomas and Peter and the like. Maybe even a Judas gospel. The Judas gospel is wonderful. The Judas gospel, and they always dealt with Gnostic knowledge, that God had some hidden knowledge that he was going to impart, and the way to get that knowledge was to progress up the chain where you were less and less fleshy and more and more spiritual. The church is always struggling with this. Um, you want to know where that's going on in today's day, all you got to do is look in the Pentecostal movement, get away from the flesh and get spiritual. In Luther's day, remember we talked about Ecolum, Patius, and Zwingli at the, at the Marburg Colloquy, trying to convince 
Luther to ascend past um, um, the heavenly Christ. You got you got to ascend to the heavenly Christ. You got to you got to ditch this the fleshy stuff and get to the spiritual stuff, and then you'll get to where religion is really cooking. Um, but these were all um, these were all um, all forgeries, all um, all all like not written by the people. They were they were later on accounts. But you'll hear about them every now and again on the on the on the History Channel or on the news come around Easter. It's usually around Holy Week. In Holy Week, the Gnostic Gospels make their yearly appearance where some Yahoo on CNN or on the History Channel or maybe even on Fox News will come out and say, oh, they found a new gospel. And we found out that Mary Magdalene was married to Jesus. Gnostic Gospel of Thomas. Judas's Gospel has Judas in on it. Okay, Judas has the Jesus and Judas have the hidden knowledge and, and Jesus and Judas are like they, they enhance this plan that Judas is going to betray me. That Judas is going to betray me, uh, the Lord, and and but it's all going to work out. You know, it's all part of the plan. All of that is just bunk. We don't want any of that in the Christian faith because it's incomprehensible with the Christian faith. And John, John fights it a lot in his gospel um, yeah. Okay. So back to the text. Great question, by the way, back to the text. Was it prepared to discuss Gnostic gospels? You might want to run to the place where Lestico was trying to send you. Um, seems like a good place for me, uh, for you to roll. Um, but these guards are paid to say that he stole the body. And what I love about this is because this actually happened, because this is spirit breathed, the Gospels don't try to dodge the accusation that the apostles stole the body. They don't. They put it right in the text. They let they, they, they give the Pharisees their story. And their story is that the disciples stole the body while the guards were sleeping. And 14, and if the, it goes to the ears of the governor, we will, um, we will, cons we will conciliate, we will, we will satisfy him. Um, we, we'll, we'll placate him. Um, and you'll be free and make you free from care. So, like, you're not going to get in trouble because, um, oh, I'm going to have some fun. All right. Look, justice isn't going to happen for you because we're going to we're going to take care of the, the governor. And so although you deserve death for falling asleep on the job, um, we're going to make sure it's OK because it's beneficial to us for it to be st his body to be stolen and not him raised from the dead. And so you have this moment where. He raises from the dead and it begins to spread. It begins to spread from the point in which he rose from the dead. And this is more proof of the authenticity of the text. It's not that they hear about it and that the story is made up in, in, um, in Bethany or in Jericho or in Galilee or in um, Emmaus and then finds its way to Jerusalem. It starts in Jerusalem and then makes its way out. And it, it's got all the seedy details of everything that happened. All the seedy details of everything that happened are included in the actual text, right down to one, the guards being placed at the tomb, and two, the guards working with, being paid off, bribed by the chief priests to tell a story that they fell asleep and the guard and G and Jesus' disciples stole the body. Now, what works against the idea that Jesus' disciples stole the body is the death of all the apostles. All the apostles, except for 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 John, meet a horrible death. They all die a horrible death. John, um, uh, James is beheaded. Um, Peter is crucified upside down. I think Thomas is drawn and quartered. Um, uh, all of them reach awful deaths. 
And not one of them, not one of them at any time said, you know what, let me tell you, this is all a funny story. This is the funniest thing you've ever heard. We're going to take you to the body so you don't have to kill me. They all believed this resurrection occurred so much that they gave their lives for him. They didn't fear the one that could throw their body into the ground. They feared the one that could throw both body and soul into hell. They feared the crucified. James the Apostle, Lestico, not Newman the pastor. Continuing on. Verse 15, taking the money, the silver, um, um, uh, one of my elders has Mountain Dew. Isn't that love? Um, so they took the money and they did what they were directed to do. And this story was spread amongst the Jews to this very day. And that's true. That's what happened. To this day, they spread this, um, this tale um, concerning the stealing of the body. And this, picks it, this happens in, um, in modern religion too. Um, whenever they want to sort of discount this, either Jesus didn't really die, and so he didn't really raise, that's the Dan Brown thing and uh, the is Islam, or um, his body was stolen. Verse 16. And we're getting into the, the best of the best of the best of this text, and I don't know if I can do the next five verses. We may have to go into overtime. The 11. Not the 12. The 11, not the 12. 12 is churchy number. 11 is incomplete. 11 says, um, says we're missing people. We need one more. One more is 12, the church. 11 is incomplete. Um, they were 12, then Judas offed himself, then they were 11. And the Lord is not going to stop with 11. The Lord does 12s. 12 apostles, 12 tribes, 11 just ain't going to cut it. And so when verse 16 occurs that the 11, pori, pori, eporu, thesan, they went to Galilee to the or, oros, the mountain, which Jesus appointed for them. When that verse occurs, the Abraham and David crowd, um, all said the same thing. The Abraham and David crowd knew the drill. Eleven isn't going to cut it. The Lord doesn't do elevens. There must be a twelve. And there's a mountain. And we've talked about mountains a lot. That a mountain is a signal that God's going to do a God strike because that's what God does on mountains in the Old Testament. Well, Lessico... If this is the three-year lectionary, let me write your sermon for you, okay? So God's going to do something big on the mountain. Of course, Pastor Lesko is so, so, uh, such a good pastor. His sermon was written three months ago. Me, on the other hand, I'm still working on mine. Big things happen on mountains, Jaeger. You got it. So Jesus, now, who's running the verbs is important here too. Isn't it, Abigail? Who's running the verbs? He's running the verbs. They go to a mountain, but the mountain they go to is the mountain that he directed them to go to. Everything is being pulled on. Uh, everything's happening is being tugged on by this Jesus, the crucified. You're not going to learn anything, Jaeger, that you already didn't learn from me in 10 years of me being your pastor. 
Um, well, maybe the old dog will have some new tricks. We'll see. You ready for this, though? Here comes some realness. I don't know who observed earlier that um, they worshipped him, um, but they also doubted. Terry Lynn. It was Terry Lynn of Baton Rouge fame and Anderson. Um, 17 is Iduntes. Seeing him, they proskunade and they edistasin. Um to Tassan, they worshipped him and they doubted. And you cannot, and you cannot, and you cannot change this verse. I have absolutely no idea why this is translated the way it is. Zero. I have absolutely no idea why this is translated. Say, worshipped him and some doubted. I've looked in the grammar for this. I've tried to figure it out on my own. I've, 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 I've done, I'm, not, I'm doing the work. And the only thing that I can get to, there's not even a text variant, is that, is that, is that the translators can't fathom something that you know happens every single week. Well, except for when it was COVID-19. Every single week you go to church and you worship Jesus and you doubt. Well, no, I doubt. Yeah, you do. Every week you go into service when you're not blocked from by COVID-19. And you sing hymns and you praise him and you confess your sins and you receive absolution and you do all the things that you need to do. All those things that you want to do. And at the same time, you're like, it's really nice of her to show up to church. Do you know where she's been the last six months? Yeah. Yeah. Will, is it that special that he's here? He... Look, he must have partied all night. He probably didn't sleep. You know, that's the way alcoholics are. Right. Hold on, I'm going to disagree with Lester, uh, with uh, Gibbs here. And it's okay because I love Professor Gibbs. It's because we can't live in a universe where they could have both at the same time done both. But look at the text. Iduntes autun pros kunesan. They worshipped him. Da ui edistasan. They doubted. They worshipped him. They doubted. That's what the text says. Well, Pastor Rake, I knew. I knew if I saw you, you would explain to me. I, I, I'm aware of what the commentators say. But this is, and you'll love this, Rake, a perfect simul used to set Peccator moment. It is. They worshipped him. They doubted. It can also be translated that way. They worshipped him. They doubted. Because we do that every single Sunday. We worship him. We doubt. Ah! Simul used to set Peccator, same time saint and sinner. This makes it real. We know how to do this. That hoy can also be used as simply an emphatic they. They worshipped him, they doubted. I believe, help now my unbelief. You got it. And 18. Pros elthon Jesus elalesen autois legon. Um, coming, Jesus coming to him. He's running the verbs. Ha, 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 ha. Pastor Rake, I love you, man. A valid translation is not necessarily a good translation. Thank you, but dude, I, I, gosh, you guys have no idea. Rake used to drive me nuts. 
And it's only in my old age have I grown to appreciate him. He's sort of like um, wine. He gets better with age. And sooner or later becomes vinegar. Let's get this done. He's running the verbs. He's running the verbs. He comes to them and he says to them, speaking, very Hebraic. Edothen. And that is the way this whole text is going to run. Edothe. This whole text is going to be run by this word. It has been given to me. What has been given to me? Pasa ex exusia. All authority. What authority? The authority in heaven and on earth. You have heaven and on earth. You have the whole shebang in Hebrew. Heaven, earth, under the earth. The whole thing is right there. And it all was not earned nor deserved by Jesus. We don't have time, James. We're going to finish this baby. It wasn't earned or deserved by Jesus. It was given. Adothe. The whole next sentence runs in the way of gift. Adothe. It has been given to me. You want to earn it? You bow down and worship him. That's chapter 3. Here, the Father gives all authority on heaven and earth to him. What's authority? What's exousia? The ability to do something. If my youngest son, my oldest son, uh, sorry, my namesake, I have an adopted son, Patrick, um, the oldest son, um, uh, 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 the oldest biological, which is my name, my, my son, George, G4. If my oldest son does a wedding and says, I now pronounce you man and wife, even though he has my name, minus the Roman numerals at the end, the four, it doesn't matter anything because he doesn't have the authority to do the thing. Exousia is the ability to do something, octoritas in Latin. So the, the what authority is, is not dynamite power, boom, but the ability to do something. All the ability to do's on heaven and on earth has been given to me in the way of gift, not earned, not deserved, not even Jesus earns it for himself. It's given to him by the Father. We are proficiently on overtime. Poriunthin test 19. Anybody who starts this thing and says, back to the text, anyone who starts this text and goes, well, the first word of the Great Commission is go, is wrong. While the first word of the uh, Great Commission is poriunthin test, and that is a verb, it's actually a participle, which is better translated as you are going. Or when do you get to where you've been called? And so, as you are going, and now comes the main verb, mathatoizata, an aorist imperative. Make disciples. As you are going, make disciples. When you get to where you've been called, this is to the 11 plus 1. This is um, the 11. As you are going, make disciples. Of what? Panta te ethna. Ethne, of all nations. So, don't get all wrapped up in the going. The going is run by Jesus. He's the one who gives them an heiress passive participle. When you get to where you've been going, when, do you, go, when you go to where you've been called, Jaeger to um, Michigan, Lestico, to um, Canada, oh Canada, rake to wherever the Lord is going to call him next to do as much damage as he possibly can. Okay? Um, as you're going, make disciples. Oh, you betcha it's Hebraic. You got it. Um, and it's also a break, break with the Jesus is coming to them and saying, as you are going, I don't really have a problem with it being translated as an imperative, but just understand that it's not. Don't build your whole theology on a word that can be translated simply as a participle. I would rather say, when you get to where you've been called, make disciples of all nations, two participles, baptizantes, and did on uh, 
Didas contest. There it is. Baptizo, uh, baptizo which is to baptize. Didasco, to teach. They are um, present, in, uh, present participles. Um, hmm. So when you get to where you're going, you baptize and you teach. That's how the disciples are made. Disciples are not made by a program or an evangelism program or the like. Disciples are made by the two participles. They, dis they deliver how that main verb is done. The main verb is make disciples. The, the who is all nations. The ones being sent are the 11. Well, isn't that given to the whole church? Work that out with the brief statement. Um, we, all, um, we all are participating in uh, the making of disciples, but um, the baptizing and the teaching is done by the 11. Um, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. In the name, in the stead, by the command. Um, he puts his name on them, the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This is why it's a Trinitarian text. What he puts his name on, he's not going to forget. Because he's put his name on it. Okay? Um, Eis ta onima, the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. So you baptize them in the name of the Father, Holy Spirit, and you teach them to te reign. Ah, we had the go the guards who were guarding him. Te oh, so teaching them to guard, I like it, to cherish. There's that word, te reign. Not to keep, like to obey, but to cherish. And not cherish like Madonna. Cherish the thought. No, 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 no. This is te reign like um, guard. Keep like something is important. You don't take your jewelry box and put it on the front lawn. No, that's where the cars go that you're fixing in the South. No, you guard something that's important. You put it in a box. A keepsake is something that's important to you. So teaching them to hold dear, not some of what I've instructed, uh, not the things that pertain to the gospel, not the things which pertain to the law, and not the things which pertain to the third use, panta Husa intelemain umen. All that I've mandated to you. So, the command. As you're going, the command, make disciples. How so? Well, to whom? All nations. What are you doing? You're baptizing and teaching. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Holy Spirit. Who? All nations. Well, that answers the who to get baptized. There are no height requirements. Good for Jacoby and good for babies too. In baptizing, um, the Lord would have all baptized, all nations, not some of the nations, not the taller nations, not those who are past the age of accountability. Nations. Ah! Um, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Teaching them Yes. When you, when you make it keep, you turn the gospel into the law. Thank you, Heather. By making it keep, all of a sudden, God's like, well, the goal of all of that I did for this whole 28 chapters was to get you back under the law so you'll keep the commandments. No, absolutely not. He did not give salvation away in 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, and earn that by dying, 26, 27. He didn't do the whole thing for salvation's sake. And then all of a sudden, he gets under the law. Great observation, Heather. Great observation. Teach them to hold dear all that I've mandated, law and gospel, all that I've mandated. That's what confirmation is for those of you scoring at home. And all of this is run in the way of the gospel, adothe, given. And here's the best. Kai ego meth umen. Look at that. Kai ego meth umen. Look at that. That is literally I with I 
I'm sorry. I with y'all am. That's literally what that translates it as. It's a chiasm. It's an ABBA in construction. And I don't want you to miss this. I'm going to get to your question in just a second, Rake. Um, he mandated the Torah, the, the, the instruction. It's both gift, uh, promise, and commandment, both um, uh, curses and blessings. But it's all been run in the Edothe way, which is going to push everything in the way of the gospel, Pastor Rake, not in the way of the law. But let's get back to this. Edu, behold, I am with y'all. All right? Don't miss this. Ego e me is the I am. But he pulls his name apart and squeezes us in there to let us know how close he is to us in the baptizing and the teaching. I am with y'all. He splits his name and he puts us in between. And thus, that is how much he is for you, with you, one of you, on your side. I am with y'all. A, A, B, B. It's a chiasm. But you want to know how close he is to you in baptism and catechism? He is with you. He splits his name and he squeezes you in. The I am who I am has you in his midst. Behold, I am, I with you am. Pasa tes hemeros. This is not an abstract to, to the end. This is all days until the consummation or the completion of the age. Where there's baptizing and teaching, there he is. And he's not just there for a short time. He's there for all time. And it's all in the baptizing and the teaching. And it's all run not in the way of law and requirements. It's all in the way of the edothe, the gift. So he came and he said to them, all authority on heaven and earth has been given to me. As you are going, make disciples of all nations, baptizing and teaching, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to hold dear everything I have mandated, commanded you. Everything I've spoken. And lo, I with you am every day, all days, until the consummation of the age. That's it. That's Matthew 28. And that's a little over time. What did Jesus mandate? Uh, the gospel. The good news. I think you should read this. Um, I think you should read this. Thank you, Karina. I think you should read this, Pastor Rake, um, like we would um, Luke 24, where repentance is ace toward the forgiveness of sins. Okay? Toward the forgiveness of sins. All right. I'm off Monday. You're not going to see me on Monday. I'm not going to be around on Monday. We are done with Matthew. All right? Look for information on the Higher Things Facebook page and on the Higher Things website of what we will be doing, doing next. But we are done with the Gospel of Matthew today. We put on our big boy boots. We push through um, all the comments that uh, dear um, Newman was making so that we could figure out um, the end. All right. But it'll be Tuesday, and it'll be same bat time, same bat channel for a brand new book, and we'll, we'll figure out what we're going to do. Gene, everybody, have a blessed day. I pray that you get to go to church, and a blessed Trinity Sunday, 
Blessed be the Holy Trinity and the undivided unity. And we'll see you soon.